One of the new, uh, more powerful features in ES6 is Promises. Promises actually is kind of the uh, power behind the new fetch command, so the new way of doing AJAX calls. Um, they are a wrapper around any sort of asynchronous task, or they can be a wrapper around any asynchronous task. So if you're doing an AJAX call, you're making a call to a server, you're expecting to get a result back, but you don't know when that's going to happen. That's what makes it asynchronous. So I've got some other examples I've listed off here. If you're reading from files, so reading and writing to files, uh, if you're doing timeouts with set timeout, set interval, if you're making geolocation calls, trying to find out the person's position, uh, if you're talking to a database, all these sorts of things are asynchronous tasks because you're asking the browser or you're asking Node to carry out these tasks but you don't know when the results gonna come back you know you're gonna get a results more than likely but you don't know when so these things are asynchronous you can go on and do other things while these requests are happening in the background so why is this important well I've got a couple of code examples here if you had a function say it was going to multiply two numbers together, 5 and 10. So we'll say it's somewhere in our code we've got a function called multiply two numbers. You pass in two numbers, it gives you a result. If I was to declare this variable and then try to console log it out here, this is synchronous. This is going to happen instantaneously, practically, and I would get a result back 50. Now, if I was to do something like this, create a variable called photo, call a function called download photo, or just a function I've made up. I'm passing in the URL of a resource that I want to fetch. This would have to make some sort of AJAX call, a fetch to the server to retrieve this image. If I was to try and access that variable on the next line, if I was to try and do console.log of photo, it would be undefined because I've declared it, I've called this function, there's no result back from this function yet, and then I'm trying to use this. That is an asynchronous task, this fetching from the server. I can't access the value of this until it has been reserved, uh, returned from the server. So we're going to uh, build a couple of promises here. I'm going to show you the basic syntax for how the promises work, and hopefully by the end of that you will be comfortable with the concepts. I'm going to do a couple more videos after this about um, promises showing you different ways that you can use them but here I just want you to get comfortable with the basic syntax so we're going to create a promise so p1 my first promise and this is going to be equal to new promise okay there's the basic syntax same sort of thing if you were declaring an array or maybe a new date object but inside of here we have to put a function this is my wrapper around some sort of asynchronous, preferably asynchronous. It could be a synchronous thing. You don't have to get really complex and do anything. You can put a promise wrapper around any function, but typically it's for something that's asynchronous. So I'm going to pass things in, and then I'm going to have a function that runs here. I'm using the arrow syntax. Uh, make sure you watch the video on the arrow syntax if you're not comfortable with that yet. When you create a promise, two things get passed in. The promise will have defined internally two different callback functions. One for when the promise was successfully returned and one for when it fails. So a promise, it's just like a promise in real life. You're asking it a favor. Can you do this for me? And the JavaScript engine is saying, Yes, I promise I will give you a result. I will give you an answer. It'll be yes or no, but I will give you an answer. I promise. So it needs a positive and a negative. Now these are the typical names used, resolve and reject. That's what the name of those two functions is. But these are just variable names. I could call it Fred and Ginger. It wouldn't matter. These are just two variable names, but the first one is the function to call when the promise resolves positively. The second one is the function to call when the promise fails. So if the promise comes back and said, ah, sorry, couldn't do it, this is the name of the function that's going to be called. 
inside of here. I can write any code I want. I could say let x equal 5. There we go. That's all I want to have happen. And if that happens successfully, I'm going to call the resolve function. That's it. There, that's the most basic it's going to get. This is a wrapper around this little function, and all it's doing is it's putting the value 5 into a variable x, and then it's saying, hey, great, it worked. It, it happened. Somewhere else in your code, you're going to be using this promise. You're going to be calling upon it. So p1, that's my promise. And then I've got a method called then. The meth then method wants a function. So we're going to put a function inside of here. Again, I'm going to use the fat arrow syntax. And it will take one thing. What is the response from the promise? If the then method runs, if this function is told to run, that means resolve was called. That's what it does. If I put something inside of here, let's say the variable x, then down inside here, this variable will be taking whatever was sent from here. I can then console.log that value. All right, so let's run this. There we go. This line just ran. We created a promise, which was a wrapper around this function. Two possible outcomes, a yes and a no. We said the yes happened. We took a value and we sent it down to this function inside of then. This calls the then, then runs, and whatever value is inside here got passed down, and we wrote it out. Now, a cool thing about functions is you can chain them together. I can have another then, which has another function inside of here, and if this return something. We well, need it to return something, but we'll just take this value, return it. That will get passed down to the next function, where you can do whatever you like. So I will write out that variable. Run this again. There we go. There was the first then, there's the second then. So we can chain these together. Inside of here we can have another promise that's called upon, when it returns, it'll call the next then, and so on, and so on, and so on. But at the very end of however many thens you have, you have the ability to define a catch function. This is what runs if reject is called, or if any of these guys throw an error. So if an error gets thrown here, an error gets thrown here, it jumps to the catch. If inside this promise, reject was called, this is what happens. So if I was to come in here and say reject, I can still pass a value. That's going to be my value. I'm going to write that out. Now I will comment that one out because this promise can only say yes or no. It's got to either resolve or reject. I can't do both. As soon as it gets the first one, that's when it jumps down here. All right, there we go, caught five. So because we rejected, it jumped down to here. And that's the basic syntax for a promise. Now, I'm not doing anything asynchronous here. Um, something asynchronous, let's say I've got, uh, I've got a, a random number generator here that I created. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a set timeout. Now this is an asynchronous thing because it's something that's going to happen in the future. I'm going to define how long, but it's still happening in the future. So I can call resolve after 
1.5 seconds, and I'm going to pass x is my number. Actually, I'm going to use that random number function. There we go. So this is going to call my random number function. I'm going to get a number between 1 and 10, and then this will be passed as a parameter to this function after 1.5 seconds. That will be the number here. So this should write out whatever my random number was, and then it will be passed on to the next one. Actually, here, let's multiply it by 2, just so we get two different numbers. So there was a little bit of a delay, that 1.5 seconds, and then the 3 and 6. Do it one more time just to see. 1.5 seconds goes by, and then 4 and 8. So 4 was my random number, and then 8 was twice that being written out here. So, resolve, reject. Those are the two possible answers for a promise. A promise is something that will give you a yes or no answer at some point, and they are very useful wrappers to put around anything that's asynchronous, like a set timeout or calling fetch. A fetch, when you make the fetch call, it actually returns a promise, which is why if you look in your uh, syntax for the fetch calls and the fetch videos, they look like this as well. This is what they're doing because fetch returns a promise. When it successfully returns, you get the then. If there's a network failure, it jumps to the catch. There's a function inside here, there's a function inside here, there's a function inside here. These functions run if it resolves. If it resolves. And then this one's if it's rejected. And that's the basics of how promises work. So I've got a couple more videos I'm going to do, talk a little bit more about different ways they can be used. Uh, there's a couple of other methods that come along, race conditions, all conditions, but we'll get into those in the future videos.